So today we're doing another of the technical challenges from the Great British Bake Off, which is Florentines. So these are small, nutty, fruity biscuits with chocolate put on the back of them. The full recipe is on the blog at www.howtomakecakes.co.uk. So let's look at the ingredients that we need for the Florentines. I've just put them on two separate plates because there are two distinct processes to making them. So firstly, we need 50 grams of butter, we need 50 grams of demerara sugar, and 50 grams of golden syrup. I've put all of those on that plate. And then we then need 50 grams of plain flour, we need 25 grams of cranberries, which are chopped up, we need 50 grams of mixed peel chopped up and then we need 25 grams of almonds and walnuts again all finely chopped so I've prepared all of those and they will go in the mixture shortly to bake these ideally you need two or three of these baking sheets I've actually only got one baking sheet like this so I've also just used a baking tray uh, you need to put some uh, baking paper on top but you don't need to grease it again so I've just put some butter underneath and then stuck the grease proof paper on top of it and that should be fine. You also need a relatively large saucepan, well not a large saucepan but not a tiny one that we're going to melt the stuff and then we're going to mix everything into it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put the butter, the sugar and the golden syrup into the saucepan and we're going to melt that down then to that liquid we will add everything else so first of all just put everything in and then we'll take it over to the hob and just put it in on a low heat so on a fairly low heat just put the saucepan on and relatively quickly that will all melt down together so continue to melt on a low heat just until all the butter has melted, which you can see it just about has now. If you can feel any lumps of sugar, just make sure that they're all dissolved in. Okay, so once that's done, we will take it over the heat and do the next stage. So all that we need to do next is mix in everything else that we've got. So just get all the other all the other ingredients, all the dry ingredients, and put them all into the melted butter, sugar, and golden syrup, and we mix that all together to make the Florentines. The key thing on this is not to use any more ingredients. You need to be very precise with measuring because just a little bit too much or a little bit not enough can mean they don't work properly. Get your spatula, mix them up and that's it. Now this mixture makes 18 Florentines so you can see that they're all relatively small. Mix that up, make sure everything's mixed in well and then that is your Florentine mixture and we just then need to spoon it onto the baking tray. So if you wanted to be very precise, you could weigh out your Florentines, but basically to get 18, it's about a teaspoonful per Florentine. So you only want to get about six on a baking tray like this because they will really spread out. So just put them on in round shape, flatten them down a little bit, and then the cooking will do the rest. the nice big space between each one. So as you can see I've kept a lot of space between each one because they are going to flatten out and spread. I just put six on each baking tray so really I need three baking trays but I've just got the two so I'm going to cook them in two batches. So put them on, put them in the oven, we have to watch them really carefully. Oven's on at 180 degrees, they'll take between 8 and 10 minutes and you want to get them just as they're going golden and they've spread out nicely. So let's put them in the oven and let's see what happens. So 
So it's just a little bit more than eight minutes and actually I think these are definitely ready. You can see they're just starting to brown right around the edges. They've spread out nicely. Those ones are ready. Let's look at the ones underneath. I think they maybe need another minute, but no more. So I'll just leave those in. So once you take them out of the oven, you just need them to harden for a couple of minutes before you take them off and put them on the wire rack, just so that otherwise they will all fall apart. So after a few minutes, we just need to take them off here. So just using a palette knife, something carefully to make sure you don't ruin the shape, just put that underneath, lift them off, and onto the wire cooling rack. They're still too soft, they will just lose their shape. But these now, I think, have just hardened sufficiently to move. So the Florentines are cooling, they'll cool fairly quickly so we can prepare the chocolate. Now, ideally, rather than just putting your chocolate in a bowl and melting it, you would temper it, um, which is quite a complicated process about heating it up. What you have to do is get the chocolate up to 53 degrees centigrade or 127 degrees Fahrenheit and then cool it down to 26 degrees centigrade which is 79 degrees Fahrenheit and a lot of people do that by mounting the chocolate and then working it on a granite worktop to cool down etc but an easy way to do it um, I actually don't have a proper chocolate thermometer so I'm not going to measure the actual temperatures but what I'm going to do is melt half of it in a bowl over some simmering water and then once that's mounted, I'm then going to add the rest of the chocolate. So it's 200 grams altogether, 100 in there. And then I've chopped up the other 100 much more finely. And then I'm going to stir that in. And stirring that in will bring the temperature of all of the chocolate back down again. So in effect, it creates a tempering effect, but is a, an easy way to do it. So 100 grams of chocolate broken into pieces in a bowl. And we'll just put it over some simmering water. So the water should be barely simmering, so just having boiled, but now a few bubbles, put that on top, and then we will melt this chocolate first before stirring in the rest. So once this chocolate is melted, if we were tempering it with a thermometer, we would be checking that this has got to 53 degrees centigrade, 127 degrees Fahrenheit, and then take it off the heat at that point. So let's assume it's got to that temperature and then we're going to add the rest of this off of the heat and stir this in and then hopefully this will bring the temperature down to the required temperature of 26 degrees centigrade or 79 degrees Fahrenheit. So the reason to cut it up nice and finely is so that it does all melt in and you're not left with lumps. You could grate it to make it even finer but due to the heat of the chocolate, this should melt it all down without any problem. So all this chocolate has fairly quickly dissolved in and you can probably actually see it's quite shiny and that's what you want, a nice shiny chocolate. So what we need to do once it's all melted and it's at the right temperature is we need to put it onto the Florentine. So I've just turned them all upside down on the rack and again, different people do this in different ways. Some people would use a, a, like a brush, a pastry brush, and brush it on. You can use a palette knife. You can do it with it whichever way you want. I think I'm just going to get a palette knife and just um, put a little bit on, let it cool a little bit, and then do the zigzag shape with the fork, which is the traditional way to do Florentines. So with the palette knife, I'm just going to get a lot of chocolate, put it on, and spread it round the Florentine so you're covering it all with chocolate you know the thickness depends a little bit on how much how thick you want it I'm going to put it on like that we just leave it to cool for a little while before we do our pattern so once you've covered them all with chocolate and they've cooled a little bit the traditional pattern to do on the Florentines is to get a fork and just do a zigzag pattern down them like that and then leave them to properly cool. So provided the chocolate tempered properly, the chocolate should set. And there you have your Florentines from the Great British Bake Off Technical Challenge. 
Don't forget, the full recipe is available on the blog at www.howtomakecakes.co.uk.